Well, as I stated in my text comment to Joe's video here, um, is I, I agree with him, uh, and uh, the uh, current uh, diplomatic efforts um, as portrayed in our mainstream media are probably nothing more than uh, just um, another ruse. Um, in other words, the um, American public is being uh, prepared uh, for the eventuality that all diplomatic efforts have been exhausted when it comes to Iran uh, before the bombs start falling. So evidently uh, we're not the only ones uh, who are waking up and uh, seeing for what it is. So there was an essay by Stephen D. over at uh, Boom and Tribune uh, which takes on a recent op-ed piece by uh, Professor Morris, um, an Israeli professor, who uh, wrote uh, an, uh, an op-ed piece in the New York Times a few days back entitled, Iran will, uh, Israel will et attack Iran. New, the New York Times uh, included an op-ed piece by Benis, uh, Benny Morris, a professor of Middle Eastern his, uh, history at Ben Gurion University. By all accounts, uh, Professor Morris is uh, no Likudist or neoconservative, but a leading figure among uh, the Israeli left. In other words, this op-ed piece is written by someone to the left of center of the current Israeli regime. So this is the context for a very deeply disturbing essay by uh, Professor Morris, for his concerns cannot be easily brushed aside as the ravings of a right-wing Israeli figure. If accurate, the next president of the United States will face the beginning of his term in office with a Middle East in flames and with all that portends for the world. Here's Professor Morris in his own words describing the current situation as he sees it. Israel will almost surely attack Iran's nuclear sites in the next four to seven months. And the leaders in Washington and even Tehran should hope should hope that the attack will be successful to cause at least a significant delay in the Iranian production schedule, if not its complete destruction. Because if the attack fails, so the professor states, the Middle East will almost certainly face nuclear war, either through a subsequent preemptive nuclear strike conducted by Israel, or a nuclear exchange shortly after Iran gets the bomb. But should Israel's conventional assault fail to significantly harm or stall the Iranian program, a ratcheting up of the Iranian-Israeli conflict to a nuclear level will almost likely follow. You know, so for the good professor then, war is unavoidable and uh, by the New York Times printing this op-ed they once again serve as cheerleaders for an upcoming attack. You know, this is what I would call public diplomatic efforts at its best. And uh, just in case somebody doesn't understand uh, my satirical undertone here, I want to point out uh, that I'm not supporting that view. Every intelligence agency in the world believes, and these are the professor's words here, believes that the Iranian program is geared towards making weapons, not to the peaceful applications of nuclear technology. And despite the current talk of additional economic sanctions, everyone knows that such measures have so far led nowhere. Well, they certainly haven't led to nuclear war. And Western intelligence agencies agree with uh, that Iran will reach the point of no return in acquiring the capacity to produce nuclear weapons in one to four years. 
you know, actually what, uh, what this professor is saying here is a complete fabrication because our own national intelligence estimate, which was published very recently, just a few months back, stated the exact opposite, namely that Iran had abandoned its nuclear weapons programs. Nonetheless, um, Israel, believing that its very existence is at stake, and this is a feeling evidently shared by most Israelis across the political spectrum will most certainly act. Israel's leaders from Prime Minister Olmert on down have all explicitly stated that an Iranian bomb means Israel's destruction, as if this was going to be automatic, okay? Uh, so Israel, uh, Iran will not be allowed to get the bomb. The best outcome the best outcome, the professor states, will be that an Israeli conventional strike <clears throat> would persuade the Iranians to halt their nuclear programs altogether, or at least persuade Western powers to significantly increase the diplomatic and economic pressures on Iran once that strike has taken place. You know, this op-ed, <laughs> in other words, is an outright call for war a conventional strike conducted by Israel, and uh, it is once again um, completely ignoring the consequences of such an attack, namely uh, possibly the crashing of the world economy, or what's left of it at this point, and you know, the rest of the world be damned um, as long as it is um, in Israel's interest. And the author laments that the international community will continue to do nothing effective uh, and that Iran will speed up its efforts to produce uh, the bomb that can destroy Israel. And the Iranians will, of course, retaliate by attacking Israeli cities with ballistic missiles, and here it comes, possibly topped with chemical and biological warheads, by prodding its local clients, Hezbollah and Hamas, into unleash... Uh, uh, their uh, international Muslim terrorist networks against Israeli and Jewish and possibly American interests. So, uh, you know, I, I just have one question. Does the a good professor actually believe that a conventional attack on Iran will not also unleash these very same forces? As uh, Stephen, Booman, uh, Stephen D. of Booman Tribune pointed out, if this is the mindset of even a left-wing historian uh, in the Israeli establishment, then uh, the situation is even more serious than we could possibly imagine. And, you know, for the op-ed pages of the New York Times to be once again used for um, warmongering is, is probably, here goes my phone, but... Uh, you get the you get the message. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much.